everyone. Today I would like to show you how to build a multi-tenant, multi-domain application with Laravel and Jetstream. I'm Julien, I'm a software engineer in Paris. I, I work at Algolia. Uh, Algolia is a hosted search engine. So you index your data and we provide very powerful, very fast search on top of it. It's, uh, it has a Laravel integration with Laravel Scout. I would encourage you to install the package, create a free account on algolia.com and try it. Um, all day at Algolia, I work with a Ruby on Rails application, but for all my side project and other things, I still use Laravel a lot. I really love Laravel. <laughs> um, the agenda today, I just wanna go over the application we're going to build, what are the issue we wanna solve and um, and especially how in a multi-tenant application, how we keep things separated in a single database. It's very important. And how to handle domains in Laravel. Um, it's easy to use subdomains, but domains comes with a little bit of uh, other issues. The app we're going to build is um, a blog platform. I wanna keep the blog example because I think everybody knows about posts and comments and how they interact together. So I think it it's, makes it very easy. What I mean by multi-tenant, that's, um, that's a word I see used a lot in the Laravel community. I'm not sure if there is an official definition, but what I mean by that is that creating a new blog doesn't require new software. For example, if you install Laravel and you start building your blog with Laravel, then you want a second blog. You have to clone again and find new hosting and uh, set up a different things. Or is it just the same app that provide uh, that makes it work for all the blogs? Often um, we confuse multi-tenant with multi-database. I don't think you have to have multiple database. Um, if you look at Laravel Forge or Laravel Vapor, they are technically multi-tenant apps. Still, it, it is only using a single database. It's much easier because Laravel is built this way and especially if you go for multi-database, you will need packages for uh, migrations, for example, and other things. And I don't wanna pull in a package for this personally, except <laughs> except Jetstream. Um, Jetstream is the new package from uh, Taylor. It's, uh, it's um, user management, team management, authentication, 2FA, all the nice things that literally every SaaS app needs. Now, Taylor did it for you and you get the scaffolding for dashboard. You can redesign it one day, but I think it's a very, very good starting point for a SaaS app. Let's go over the, the models and the, the data we use in this project. First, we have a post, of course, as title and comment and uh, content. And we attach comments to a post. So comments belong to a post. And the, all the posts are attached to the blog. A blog has a name and domain. Domain is very important for the second part. And in this case, this is our tenant. This is the tenant is the blog where we host all the information and everything is related to the blog. Currently the comments are related to the blog through the post. I'm attaching a user to the blog and I'm ignoring here the author of the post and stuff. I just wanna focus on what user has access to what post and permissions and things like this. First, I wanna say in a typical SaaS app, do not uh, attach your user directly to the, the tenant, or at least not as a one, one relationship. It should be multiple user accessing multiple blogs. This is why I would highly encourage you to use the team feature from um, Jetstream. You attach your blog to a team and the team can have multiple users. The point is also that users can have multiple blogs. And in any SaaS app, there will be a point where you need team management, you need multiple users. It's easier to just use it from the get-go with Jetstream than having to refactor it later. Looking at this design, there is a one-one relationship between team and blog. So a team has one blog and a blog can only have one team. So in this case, I'm going to take it even further and remove entirely the blog entity and just use team, the team model from Jetstream as my tenant. So everything will be attached to my team. I have set up a, a project currently. It's a, a new, new Laravel app. I, 
called Enjet Stream and I installed it with uh, the team feature with Tash Tash Team. And I use the live wire stack. It is not important for this talk. I don't have time to show you this. Uh, I installed the debug bar so I can show you some um, nice SQL queries. Now let's go on the app. Uh, if you look, this is the welcome page on the new Laravel app. Because I have Jetstream, I get those links right here, uh, register and login. I have already seeded the app with different uh, team and users so I can connect. Gg.example.com password. Once you're logged in, you get to the dashboard, get navigation at the top, uh, drop down here for user preference, user profile, user logout. And here you get team management. So I'm going to go over and start with going in the project, navigation, and here there is the, the drop down for team. And everywhere it says team, I'm going to replace it by blog. I'm going to do it for the entire file actually. So team, blog, I make sure the case is matching and I'm using whole world. Yes, replace all, let's do it for the plural. Replace all, if I go back to the project and refresh, right now, I have now a blog selector. <laughs> can create a new blog, I can access to blog settings, and I can switch blog if I have many. This is why I like to use the, the, the tenant as team, as because it makes it very easy. So now for the user, it's called blog, but technically in the code, that would still be a team. Uh, this is the routing file where we're going to add a post list. So first, I'm going back to the navigation, I'm going to find this uh, dashboard link we had at the top. Okay, yes, here, copy paste the whole thing and replace it with post, post, post. Jetstream copies the, the views directly in your project, as you can see here, and you are meant to modify them. They are your views, you know. Oops, so I defined the root post, but I haven't defined, defined the root yet. So let's do this, root, get post Oops. and I'm not going to use controllers but keep everything in closure so we don't jump files all the time here I have built a view uh, view that is called post index and you need to pass it a list of posts now we'll see how to grab the list. Okay. If I refresh, I forgot to name the root. <laughs> so uh, this is here, name, post, refresh. Now I have a post link. The page work, uh, but it doesn't have the, the content yet. So how do we grab the content? We want all the posts only for this team. And this team in Jetstream is uh, stored in the user. So I'm going to have like post import where statement where I really limit all the posts I want to see to the team ID. Again, I'm going to say team and blog a lot. Uh, <laughs> those are the same. Because post belong to the team, there's team ID column. I need an ID and I'm going to get the collection. How do we gr grab the ID? I'm going to show you, you need to, to find this in documentation, but you find the logged in user here with the OS um, facade. You can access the logged in user because I'm inside. <coughs> I'm inside uh, this section of the routing where it is behind authentication. It has a current team and uh, team, it's a team model. I'm just going to grab the ID. Now, this is incorrect here. And let's see how it goes. It works. <laughs> so you get the list of posts. Great. Now, if I click the link here, I want to show a single post. So let's create the root. Root, get, then it's post. Uh, post, 
and variable here the the post what post do i want to see function okay i also have defined a view for this it's post dot show and it needs a post so for this post how do we get it well technically it's the same thing except i also get an id variable from here copy paste to get the id and for post i'm going to post where so same where team id is the id i'm going to add another where statement where id is the post i'm going to grab the first result because i need only one so we import if i refresh i get my post here we already added quite a lot of complexity we have to grab the team id every time not easy i would like it maybe to be injected or be something simpler and especially i don't want to rely on having to put where statement with team id everywhere every time i need to access my post i don't want to be remembering this there will be a point where i forgot and then i'm showing other people's post in every blog it's it's terrible i think that's uh, where the appeal for multi-database comes from but i think laravel has everything you need uh, to keep it in a single database the best solution is to add a global scope so i'm going to do it through um in a with a middleware so uh, artisan make middleware and uh, and my middleware will be ensure current team if i go in the http middleware i should have a new class to ensure current team so i'm going to move the where part let's focus on the list for now uh, in the in the middleware so how do we do this uh, first we want to add it to post so let's post add global scope see it's the first proposition function we received an eloquent query builder it is documented of course and we modify it to add this where statement where team id is the id uh, how do we grab the id so from here since i have the request passed in here i'm going to take the user from the request and the same way i did it before i'm looking for current team and i'm taking the id it's a closure don't forget to bind the variable id now we need to use this uh this middleware so in my routing i'm going to call it here at the end the last middleware will be ensure current team and i can start removing all the all the the id and all the commands on the where statement so here what i want is just post all i want all the posts let's go back and in the list see i have automatically applied in when i select the post the middleware has ensured that there is a where statement this is very handy now it also works for this endpoint so i'm going to remove this and remove the where id uh, maybe i can just use find and it works but honestly i don't think it's how we want to do it in laravel often we want to rely on uh, the framework to resolve the post directly in the routing so i'm going to type in post here and laravel is going to give me the post it works but if you look at the query here select post where team id2 we lost the where statement this is because laravel has um, already resolved the root the, the the root parameter when we applied the 
the, end, the, the global scope. So I'm going to take the middleware and go all the middleware are defined in a kernel. By default, you get two kernels, one for console, one for HTTP, Swift HTTP one. Find the web group, I'm already at the web group. This is here substitute binding where the magic happened for root resolution. So I'm going to ensure my middleware is called default. This is called for every web root, whether you're logged in or not. So I just need to make sure that we wrap this in an if statement that if there is no user, we don't try to get team ID from users. And now going back, refresh still works, but especially if you look at post, now it was applied automatically. Great. Moving on to domain. I'm going in the blog settings. Unfortunately, I don't have time to show you how it works, uh, the, label, the live wire part. So I'm just going to uncomment two things already pre-built. It's uh, a new section, sorry, a new section in the, in the team settings to add a domain. So I'm going to start with my blog as a subdomain. Okay. In the routing, I want to start adding the root. Root. If you look at the domain, the documentation for Laravel, this is how it's shown. So you create a new group, and then we'll start adding just the default root for slash. and return an overview I prepared that is blog home and the same way we want to pass post that would be directly post all. Oh, of course we did it for the, for the dashboard. We want to also do it for the public part of the app. So now if I, so I have set my blog as the subdomain in the, in the, in the app. So if I go on HTTP my blog dot demo dot Laravel, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work because routing and routing the, the order matters. And this route is defined first. So the, the router match this one first. If I move my definition at the top and I refresh, now it works. But I would advise against relying too much on the, on the order. And once you start using domain, just cop everything in the domain. That is easy enough. You move all your root definition inside a root domain and it doesn't have to have a variable. So here we want timo.laravel uh, in a typical SaaS app that would be where the dashboard is, but also the marketing website lives in this domain. And then you have all the public website lives with the subdomain. If I refresh, I still have the subdomain. Now, how do we want to um, apply the same logic of adding a, a global scope? So I can write post all and not have to care about anything weird. I don't have a user, but what I have, I'm gonna show you. What I have, if I die the request, actually I'm going to die the request root. In the parameters, the subdomain here is available. So what you can do is find the team based on this domain from the request. Team. Uh, where domain is request root parameter. We named it blog, I think, and I need the do, 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 do. here. I need the first one. If you are user 
if you're a logged in user in the dashboard we will apply this code from here if you're using a public website that has a domain then we will apply it like this uh, get it from the domain so here we have id which is team id let's go back and see if it works <laughs> doesn't seem to work too well I should have three posts, I have only one. And if I look at the query, actually, team ID one, why is one? Okay. I think I know, but um, I'll ignore this for now and uh, follow along. We're going to move to domain, actually, because there is nothing matching here. If you wanna, you're looking at the domain, the blog um, parameter will, team domain but inside the database we we didn't store my blog we where we did bon. <laughs> um, I, I'm going I'm going I'm going along with this I know it's here I call it domain it should be blog if I refresh now I have my post voila the, the the it's it's actually a tricky part and uh, I, I got tricked many times with this the, the naming in the root parameter is very important so now we have the subdomain let's move to a, a full domain I have blog what I want is technically only viable to match if I go back to my app in the dashboard go back to the blog settings instead of my blog I'm going to set the domain entirely so with extension and in the routing I'm removing all the the dot laravel part and I'm using blog if I go to my blog dot laravel I get a 404 and this is because by default the domain feature of laravel is really designed to work with um, with subdomain so it's looking for dots to break up the, the the string so what we need is redefine or no, at least tell the router for this blog variable I want you to use this regex regex and we could craft a, a better regex but for now I'm going to allow any character so I just want to make sure it doesn't break on dots it looks very simple when you see this like this, but it took me quite a while to figure out how to, to manage domain. If I refresh, get my post on my blog.laravel. Now, another little trick I wanna show you, if I had um, if I had a root for the post, uh, by ID, I get here return view uh, which is blog of post and I need to pass it a post we'll see how to grab this but the important part I want to show is uh, name sorry name blog post going to name this root blog post uh, and if I go back in the navigation menu not navigation sorry in the home pa page of my uh, of my blog I want to add a link here so if you're looking at the list I want a link on the title so I can go to the single page if I use the router blog post you need to pass parameters of course so you pass post which is the post ID sorry ID and you refresh well, this is different issue <laughs> uh, make sure it's valid PHP 
and you get missing required parameter for root blog post. You have the post, but you have missing blog. And if you look at the routing, everything that is inside this group here has a blog variable. So everywhere you're using the, um, the router, oh, sorry, everywhere where you're using the router, you have the root, you pass the parameter for the root, but for every route, you need to pass blog and pass it the domain. This is very painful. You don't want to be doing this, but of course, Laravel has a, a way, <laughs> a good way to handle this. If we go back to the middleware, where we apply the scope for, for team ID, you can also say here you have the team accessible uh, from here that we resolved from the routing. So you can use the URL facade, use defaults, and here you can define default variable for every variable in your routing. So again, the name is very important. I'll make sure I use the good one. Blog, yes. And from team, you get the domain. Now, if I refresh, I automatically have the root working for this. One last thing, yes. One last thing here, if you type in post, Laravel resolve the post, it has already the, the scope. But technically the first variable passed for every root, every control root is the blog. So you get the blog as a string, if I refresh. It should work, <laughs> it should work because we pass it here. Um, if, you, if I die this, here, the blog is a string. It's the subdomain. It's the domain, sorry. Myblog.label, the domain. What I want is tell, uh, I, I want to type in this as team. And I want also Laravel to resolve this thing. Doesn't work. Doesn't know how to resolve this. If you look at the query, query, when it tries to resolve the team, it's looking at where, domain, uh, that's the the one in my um, in my middleware. If you look at the other one in implicit root binding, it is looking at teams the ID and passing the the value. So there is very easy way to do this with Laravel is to tell the router what um, what attribute to use. So here we want to use domain. If I refresh, I get a root. I get the team directly auto-loaded in my, in my views. This is a uh, very, very handy when it comes to multi-tenant. All right, I think that is what I, uh, everything I wanted to show you. So a quick um, tip that I didn't really advertise in the talk, but I think it's very important. See the way we add uh, all the global scope with team ID, if we keep the comment only attached to teams via the post or through the post, it makes it very hard to write the, the, the scope, the, the global scope, because you will need to figure out what are all the posts that belongs to this blog and then add a, a global scope on the comments with all the post ID. Depending on your app, maybe you're passing hundreds and hundreds of IDs for a global scope. So every time you use the ID, it's uh, every time you use the comments model, it's adding this where statement with massive list of IDs. I really don't think it's ideal. And if you simply add team ID attributes directly on comments, you just do the same as we did before. You get all the, all the, all the nice things of global scope, very easy. It looks like you're duplicating the, the relationship, but I really think it, it's worth it. If I go over what we did, um, we use JetSuite Teams as a tenant, and you see you get the tenant switch at the top, you get everything works out of the box with JetStream. You get a global scope to keep things separated, so you make sure you don't leak data. Uh, we use domain and not just subdomains with the little where trick, and also the root uh, uh, attribute to implicit binding. We resolve a uh, tenant via the domain, and uh, you do this and you have the tenant everywhere. URL default, very handy helper, very important if you want to um, 
you don't want to repeat yourself every time you use the, the root helper. And we modified team attribute. I didn't have time to show you, but uh, the way Jetstream is done, you can add uh, different attributes to the, the, the team settings page and it makes it very easy to build a, a, a little SaaS app. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed uh, the talk. I hope you learned something. Uh, the, the, the code source is available at uh, on GitHub and uh, thank you.